Hey everyone, welcome back to Anvil Do Miniatures. My name is Dietz, and when Darren Latham tells you to paint something, you paint something. So in this video, I'll be painting up a 90 Space Marine. Apologies to all my Warhammer fantasy boys and girls out there. This video, I will be diving into some 40K stuff. So let's get into it. So as you probably heard, Big Dazza Latham from Games Workshop hit 90K followers on Instagram. So he's put a challenge out there for everyone to paint a 90 Space Marine. I always paint Warhammer Fantasy models. I have painted one before a few months ago. It was a Dark Angels Chapter Master and I had a good time painting it. So I jumped at the chance to do this again. Now I found it very hard to find this 90 Space Marine. I couldn't find one anywhere. I asked some people on Instagram, but no one really had any lying around. But Stu from Tazzy pulled through. Thanks, Stu. And he sent me two of them. Now, there are so many chapters to choose from. There's a huge list that I went through and there's nothing that really stuck out to me until I saw the Legion of the Damned. I love these guys. I've seen them painted in the past. I think Darren Latham painted one as well, which looked amazing. So I really wanted to push myself and paint one of these. Now, I haven't really done that much freehand in miniature painting before. So this is gonna be a really good test and I was gonna try something new. When I received this guy, he was covered in a little white primer. So I did give it a bath and dead old, gave it a good scrub and then off I went. I used a black prime, then gave it a really watered down thin coat of Abaddon Black all over and started adding some highlights to the armor using Dark Reaper. I did this by glazing it to all the top panels on the armor, the helmet, and the hands. Now this is my second Space Marine painting, so I'm not too confident with it. So I just thought the armor needed something a little else to make it not as one dimensional. So I just tried to get some light emulating from the top. I glazed lighter amounts of Dark Reaper, mixing a little bit more water to the lower parts of the armor. I then glazed Abaddon Black from the other direction to try to blend it all together a little bit more. When I first started painting minis, I made sure I learned how to glaze. I feel like it really elevates your models. So one great thing about choosing the Legion of the Damned is that it was black, so I could always go back over the black paint to fix up any little mistakes I had. I wanted to get the hard stuff out of the way, so I went straight into it and started painting the flames. I used to work with a guy who was obsessed with Guy Ferrari flame t-shirts, so I think I know my way around some Guy Ferrari hot rod type flames. Using corn red, I slowly and carefully sketched on my flames. The best thing you can do is have a reference image for this and just really take your time. I like using a really small brush so I can have my fingers close to the tip of the brush so it feels like you're holding a pen. I did this to the bottom of the armor on the legs and I also just did it on the one shoulder panel because I really wanted to push myself and go for a freehand skull on the other shoulder panel. I did a couple coats of corn red so it wasn't so opaque. So like the reference image of the Legionnaire, I wanted a large skull on this opposite shoulder pad. I found the center and then sketched a line down the center with Zandri dust. The size of this line would be the overall size of the skull. Then I sketched on a line across, two thirds of the way down, and made that line two thirds of the size of the first line, so a little bit shorter. Then, connecting the white lines, I drew a circle-like shape. After this, I sketched on cheekbones, making them protrude out a little bit, but only come to the bottom of that first line. Then. I just added a squiggly line across the bottom to represent the teeth and then I filled it in with about two coats of paint just so it was nice and bold. Next I threw on some layers, I used Andrew dust for all the areas I wanted the bone look and then applied dried bark to all the pouches, gun holster and the knife sheath. At this point I felt like my marine needed a little bit more oomph so I decided to give all the armour panels some bones. This was a little bit of an undertaking because I didn't want them to look like cartoon bones so I tried my best to have them have a natural shape. Again, I had a reference image for this. I started off with the bigger bones and then worked my way across to the smaller bones in the hands and the feet. I find doing a simple shape first, like a line for the bones and then slowly building off that to get that bone shape really works best. After this, I threw down some gun metal to the face pipes, some of the backpack and just the gun. Now I've got to apologize to everyone out there because it was just so much to do in this mini. I kind of jumped around from flames to bone color to layers to highlights. I just went all over the shop. So I apologize for that, but bear with me. Back to the flames. And I did a light coat of Evil Sun Scarlet to the tops of the flames to add some brightness. When doing this, really take your time. It's not a race because you don't want those tips of the flames to be kind of circular. You want them to be very sharp. After this, I went for some Wild Rider Red and made sure not to cover too much of the Evil Suns. Once I was happy with this, I applied some Troll Slayer Orange and covered a little bit less of the flames. I did some lines that headed down to the bottom of the flames just to try blending in a bit more and to really start that transition. 
a good idea is to kind of do a tiny bit of this and stop to assess. To give the flames depth, we're gonna need a few shades of red, orange, and yellow. So it's easy to go too hard with one color and then it will really overtake everything. I then added a small amount of orange flare to up the brightness again. Then I moved on to Uriel Yellow, being careful not to add too much and to focus on blocking on the bottom of the panels. You can have this as small amounts of flames as well, but focus on it being a little bit lower. The best way to look at the flames is that red is on top, orange is in the middle, and yellow is on the bottom. For hot spots, we'll apply some Dawn Yellow to little places to make it pop. And finally, I glazed some Bad Moon Yellow to the bottom to blend it together. I also added an edge highlight of Dawn Yellow to the bottom of the panels. So this was a process for me. I never have painted flames before. There would be a few things I'd do differently if I was to do it again. But if you do paint these on minis and you do paint Legion of the Dam squads and whatever, you're crazy. I can't believe you do it and my hat is off to you. After this, I added a wash of skeleton bone all over the Xandri dust. And I also went over the bone parts of the armor panels lightly with the skeleton hoard as well, just being very, very careful not to spread it too much. Then I went all over the gun metal and the dried bark leathers with null oil. Then I tackled the eye lenses and I just threw down some corn red as the base. Then I added a highlight of Evil Sun Scarlet covering about two thirds and pushing it to the front. Then I used some Troll Slayer Orange covering a little bit less. And finally, a small amount of Uriel Yellow just at the front like a small dot. Last up, I carefully placed a white dot in the back of the lens. And now for the 40K boys and girls favorite part, edge highlighting the Space Marine armor. I carefully went around each panel with Thunderhawk blue and man, was this a process. It was very, very annoying and it drove me insane. After this, I went over the top facing armor panels with an edge highlighter of rust gray. I also applied this to the edge of the shoulder pads to make them look a little bit more sharp. And last up on my Space Marine Armor Edge Highlighting Marathon, I used a little bit of blue horror just to the tips of the panels. I went over my leathers with Doomble Brown, then with Scrag Brown, and a final highlight with a mix of Bone White and Scrag Brown. This is nothing special, it's just my little leather recipe I really like. Next was the true metallic metal, and I just went back over with a small amount of gun metal first, trying not to cover up too much of the null oil. And then I glazed this to the top of the backpack booster things. And then I finished it all off with a nice bright silver highlight all over. Now time to go back to freehanding the skull. Using Abaddon Black, I traced out the cheekbones a little better, and then added the nose drawing a little incomplete triangle. Then I sketched on the eye sockets, drawing bigger triangles. Just take your time with this, starting out small and then working your way up, just so you can get the eye sockets to be the same size. I drew little lines for the teeth. Then using Skeleton Horde, I drew on some darker shades above the eyes, around the nose, below the cheekbones and above the teeth. After this, I painted some teeth using Xandri dust, just using my skinniest brush. Now it's time for some highlights in the skull, and I mixed half Xandri dust, half bone white, and drew this all around the eye sockets, the nose, the cheeks, and gave the middle of the forehead a little bit of a highlight. I used pure bone white next, and then went over the same areas, and also highlighted the teeth and around the top of the head. Then last up was a mix of bone white and pure white and I just added this to the teeth, top to the eye sockets and a nice line on the top of the head. I then just went around the teeth with black just to make them stand out a little more. Now I did the same technique I did for the skull for all the bones and I had a reference image so I just went back over and used the same colours and just really sketched out the bones on the armour panels. I then went over the wings on the chest, the mask and the skull using the same colours and just taking my time until I was satisfied. I did glaze the brighter colors to the front of the mask to help it stand out a little more. Now this gem is gonna be hidden, but I never back down from a challenge. So I used Evil Sun Scarlet as the base. I then glazed on black to the top right. Down in the bottom left, I added Wild Rider Red and then a small amount of Troll Slayer Orange to the bottom as well. I then just added my usual white dot to the top right. So I've been playing Warhammer 40k Bolt Gun on the PlayStation recently, and I really do love the classic look of the Bolt Gun, so I want to keep it the same look. I went over the magazine, the sight, and the hammer with gun metal, and then used Corn Red on the rest. Next was Gianna's Gold on the wings, 
a wash of Nun Oil over the Gun Metal, a wash of Flesh Terrors Red over the Reds, I cleaned up a little bit with Gun Metal, I then used a wash of Gullum and Flesh over the little wings, then I carefully applied Evil Suns all over. I highlighted the edges with Wild Rider Red, and then did a small little edge highlight with Orange Flare from Two Thin Coats. I then did a small final highlight of Uruk Armor Gold on the gold and silver on the silver and it was finished. So that's pretty much it guys, all finished and here it is, my Legion of the Dam 90s Space Marine. Thanks so much for watching guys. I know I mainly focus on Warhammer Fantasy Battles, so this week it was nice to do something different and flex my muscles and try to do some freehand. Let me know down in the comments what chapter you're gonna be painting for the 90s Space Marine Challenge, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.